Hi everyone, Fritz here. In today's video, we're gonna go over your Mac plate. Your McConkie Auger or Mac plate has two components to it. One is going to be selective and the second is going to be differential. Before we get into what these two things mean, let's first look into the procedures of how you're gonna do this lab. It's actually very simple. You're gonna be given this plate, which has this reg pigmentation to it. And all that you're gonna be doing is streaking three different bacteria across it with a Q-tip, just like this. Pretty simple, just using aseptic transfer. And then once you've inoculated the bacteria, go ahead and label your plate, stick it in the incubator, and wait for the results. When you get it back, you're gonna see something similar to this. And this is where we're gonna go back to looking at what it means to be selective and differential. The selective portion of the plate allows us to only grow gram-negative bacteria. And the reason why is because the two components in the plate, one is going to be crystal violet, and the other is going to be bile salts. Now the bile salts here are very similar to the bile salts that you have in your digestive system. Think about it if you eat a tomato or a piece of lettuce with E. coli on it which is a gram-negative bacteria. You are very likely, if this is in high enough concentrations, to get sick because of the E. coli being in the wrong place. Therefore, we can assume that if we have bile salts on the plate, it will get rid of any gram-positive bacteria, but allow for any gram-negative bacteria to survive and grow. The differential portion elaborates a little bit more on the selective portion of the bacteria. The differential means that we know that we already grew gram-negative bacteria, but we wanna know some additional information about that bacteria that's growing. And that is, is it a lactose fermenter? And the way that we're gonna know this is because we included lactose, which is what the bacteria would take up if it is a lactose fermenter, but also pH red indicator. And this is exactly why we have this red color on the plate. So you can think about it in a sense that the lactose that we put onto the plate is stained with pH red indicator. So it's safe to assume that if the bacteria takes up lactose, it's also taking up the pH red indicator, which reflects to us that the gram-negative bacteria is also a lactose fermenter. Now, when we're looking at the results, we can see that we have three different results here. The first one here in yellow. This indicates to us that we have normal bacterial growth on a plate, very similar to what you've seen prior in which we have this clear to yellow bacterial growth on the plate, but it's not red. So we know that it's gram negative, but it's not a lactose fermenter. Now, the one on the bottom reflects if we have gram negative bacterial growth because it's growth on a mag plate, but it also has a pink color. So does this mean that it's a lactose fermenter because it took up the pH red indicator, which means that it took up the lactose? And I'm sorry to tell you, but the one on the bottom here is not a lactose fermenter. You can think about it like this. If you have a white shirt and you eat something with hot sauce on it, that's red. Your shirt would get stained with that red hot sauce, but your shirt when it was made, wasn't made with red dye. Same thing here. The bacteria grew and just because the pH red indicator was in the vicinity, some sort of diffusion happened, that bacteria got stained with it. It's not that the bacteria took up the lactose, which is stained with the pH red indicator. It's just that the pH red indicator seeped into the bacteria. That's all. A positive result would be reflected by our middle bacteria here. This shows us a clear clearing in the middle in which the bacteria took up the lactose and also took up the pH red indicator in the area. This is a clear indication that some sort of metabolism actually happened. Not maybe it did, maybe it didn't, but for sure it did because it took up all of the surrounding lactose as a metabolic resource. And with all of that in mind, here are some additional questions that you can expect about this lab come test day. And feel free to answer those questions down in the comment section below and leave any questions that you have down there as well. And don't forget to check the description for additional study materials. And if you found this video helpful, please leave a like and subscribe. And I'll see all of you guys in the next one.